There, uh, there are surely new ideas. Uh, it, uh, it depends what you mean by free will. The world looks pretty much like it would look uh, if there was no God in charge. Hi, my name is Steven Pinker. I'm here at Penguin to answer some big questions. Cancer culture is absolutely real. There uh, are organizations that keep lists of the people who have lost their jobs or have been uh, punished or censored. And it's a, it's a growing list. It's not simply that the uh, feelings are hurt of some powerful people. Quite the contrary, the real victims of cancel culture are the powerless, the independent journalists, the journalists who've been fired from uh, their positions at, at magazines and newspapers, the um, graduate students and postdocs and uh, lecturers who have been fired from their positions at universities, the employees who have been uh, fired often for trivial breaches of decorum. Uh, so there are real people who have suffered and moreover, the fact that they have been punished mean, means that there is a, a regime of intimidation that puts other people on notice that if they voice a, an unpopular opinion, their job could be on the line. There, uh, there are surely new ideas, although they have to come from somewhere, and that the raw material consists of existing ideas. We uh, have a, uh, an ability that's hard to suppress for seeing similarities between some new phenomenon and something that we're already familiar with. So for example, the, the atom, when physicists first tried to characterize it, was analogized to a solar system. The atom was certainly a, a, a new idea, the atom of a nucleus with electrons circling it, but it was clearly lifted from the idea of a solar system, which in turn probably was inspired by ideas of, say, a tetherball. And likewise, when Darwin came up with the theory of uh, natural selection, he analogized it to artificial selection of the kind that pigeon breeders do when they select uh, birds with certain traits and allow them to reproduce and imagine what would happen over many generations. So the, f the, uh, the first source of new ideas is analogy. The other one is, is uh, recombination. We can form big ideas out of smaller ideas. Uh, we can take the idea of uh, uh, of an explosion and the idea of an origin and combine them and get the idea of the Big Bang. The ability to compose simple ideas to form complex ideas where the, the, the meaning of the whole idea is deduced from the meaning of the individual concepts and the way that they are related is something that language is adapted to expressing because of the property of language called compositionality, namely that the meaning of a sentence can be inferred from the meanings of the individual words and the way that they are arranged. And therefore, language allows us to uh, not only entertain new ideas, but to communicate them. And there's a cliche in journalism that when a dog bites a man, that isn't news, but when a man bites a dog, that is news. Uh, that shows the power of language to convey news by taking familiar concepts dogs and biting and uh, men, by arranging them in a new order, an entirely new concept can be uh, con uh, conveyed. And what it lays bare is that we can entertain new concepts, not just a man biting a dog, but a cow jumping over the, the moon, or uh, God creating the heavens and the earth. The incredible panoply of human ideas comes from uh, our ability to take simpler ideas and assemble them into new combinations. There's no evidence that God exists. The, the laws of nature don't seem to require or show evidence of divine intervention. The, the, uh, all claims of miracles have shown to be um, bad memory, trickery, selective reporting. Uh, the chronology of the events in the scriptures that uh, tell us about God have been shown to be mistaken by our best history in archaeology and science. We don't see signs of cosmic justice such as wrongdoers punished uh, or uh, uh, conversely people who suffer having brought it upon themselves as retribution for past deeds. So the world looks 
pretty much like it would look uh, if there was no God in charge. And that's a reason to think that there is no God in charge. It um, uh, can be used for good. For many of us, it's a source of access to articles and, uh, and videos that we might not otherwise come across. It's a way of people, for people to connect who might be separated by uh, geography. It was a godsend during the pandemic when video conferencing allowed life to go on in a way that would have been catastrophic if the pandemic had come 20 years before. But the massive spread of social media also reminds us to be careful what we wish for. That whereas it can be useful when people are simply exchanging vacation photos, uh, finding out what one another are, are uh, doing, uh, it turns out there's um, probably a pretty good reason why not everyone should be a, a publisher. Namely that social media m makes it all too easy to disseminate falsehoods, uh, unvetted um, uh, claims, instant reactions as opposed to the slower, more deliberate, edited and fact-checked press. And it's this slow collective apparatus of following certain rules that make an entire community more rational than any individual voice that is responsible for a lot of the rationality that we have enjoyed. Rationality isn't the uh, just a talent of a single individual, but it has to be implemented in communities that adhere to certain rules that allow uh, instant reactions to be suppressed in favor of a slower and gradually accumulating understanding of, of the, the world. All of these things uh, are features that social media militate against. Uh, it, uh, it depends what you mean by free will. If it's a, some process that manages to escape the laws of causality, then no. It's not the case that every time you make a decision, a miracle occurs in your brain. On the other hand, we do distinguish uh, in ordinary conversation between chosen acts and those that are reflexes, like banging your knee with a hammer and your, your, your uh, leg flexes. There are brain processes that are um, astonishingly complex, so complex that you can't predict what a person will do just knowing what they've done in the past and the situation that they're in. Now randomness is not the same as free will, but it's certainly the opposite of determinism. That is the idea that if we knew the history of the organism and its current situation, we could predict exactly what it could do. We can't do that with humans, and uh, the, the term free will um, uh, it encompasses that lack of complete determination. The idea that, that we need free will because that's uh, essential to the notion of responsibility can be rethought of as uh, the brain is capable of anticipating and acting upon the uh, expectations of, of others. And that, that uh, therefore we can hold people responsible by letting it be known that how they act will have consequences that will change how they act in the future. That is, if you know that if you rob a liquor store, you'll be put in jail, fewer people will choose to rob liquor stores. Conversely, if you uh, make a donation, if you help someone in distress, if you solve a problem, you will be esteemed and that incentivizes people to do things that are uh, more likely to, to benefit one another. Uh, so those are all the phenomena that we tend to associate with free will and it's a way in which uh, clearly we do choose our actions as long as we understand chance not to be a miracle but an extremely complex process that takes in lots of uh, diverse information. Uh, the meaning of life for each of us is I think to take advantage of the capacity for capacities for flourishing that we are born with, that are made, made available by the, the nature of our brains. The fact that we can take pleasure in beauty, in love, in social connections, in ways that don't deprive others of uh, enjoying those same capabilities. And so I, I would say the meaning of life is not only to take advantage of the sources of, of uh, pleasure and satisfaction, but to ensure that other people can as well by, by granting to others the same prerogatives and rights that we claim to ourselves. All of the things that make it possible to 
think about the meaning of life, uh, rationality itself, are things that we, um, that, that we ought to foster. That is, uh, life, l'chaim, uh, knowledge, reason, compassionate concern for the well-being of others, equivalent to the well-being that we claim for ourselves. Thanks for watching. My book, Rationality, can be obtained in hardcover, ebook, or audiobook by clicking the link below. For more like this, subscribe to Penguin.